now underway. Alright, who's going to come out first for the bands? I mean, Curse, they could try aiming it at Boy Boy. We've seen a lot of Elise lately. The question yes. is, did TPA do the homework on Curse today? Katarina was played by uh, Jackie earlier, and something I got to see, uh, which was really fun, was TPA all sitting around a TV watching the games from other competitors. So they know Curse, they know what they did, and they're going to target their bands, maybe not on the history that they have, but what they've seen in play so far. Yeah, and hoping that uh, Liquid Alista had some time with the team to chat about uh, what uh, what strategies they're going to be pulling out here to make sure they actually get out of the loser's bracket. But I uh, got to say, though, you know, team I did watch Night Jackie play a lot of Minesweeper in between the games up on stage. He's amazing at it, but that's, that, should, that needs to be team talk time. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird how some teams work. All right. Curse and Nate, they are a team that partied hard yeah. the weekend of IPL faceoff, and they took second. Um, Meet Playground, they only woke up 25 minutes before their match against Fear, and they actually end up winning that <laughs> match. So maybe teams, maybe some teams just don't practice and they play better because of it. Sometimes, I mean, some, like, I remember, geez, even in high school, like, I would just never study for tests and just kind of, like, kind of eek on by. It worked sometimes, but, yeah, you know, just remember, this is the big stage. We're This is the third day. Tomorrow is when everything wraps up. This is not the time to be sleeping. And, well, this is losers, so if... If yeah. someone loses a set, well, someone has to lose a set. Whichever team loses, they're they're gone. They may not go home today. They're going home in a few days. They're going home, I believe, this will be for eighth place? I think so. I think we're pretty close there, yeah. So, yeah, it was like the majority of the team's already now out. And uh, we've still also had some amazing stuff happen in the winner's side. And actually, the winner of this set will be going on to play CLGEU, who just a few moments ago... Lost on the main stage to World Elite with an, an amazingly long and drawn out was like 70 minute game. If you did not watch that game, watch the VODs when they're released. It was one of the best games of League of Legends I've ever seen. We oh, had the TriCast go on it. It was hype as hell. If you're just coming from that game, uh, take a moment. Just go ahead. Get your energy back. Maybe eat some fruit. Shouts yep. to Peaches. Peaches are delicious. Yes, they are. And just like <laughs> do what you need to do to get back in this game because we've got we've got more sets coming. We're not even close to done for the night. Now, I'm seeing look, I'm seeing something odd here on Curse and I'm seeing a champion who, for the most part, has been banned for a great duration of the tournament, and that is Diana. That is Diana. I believe the stats before we started games today was that Diana was banned or picked in every single game except one. Crazy. So she has clearly been one of the dominant characters of the game. Curse. Oh. Oh, crap. This is this is awesome. They might be going for assassination comp. They normally only do this when they have a Diana pick. But if we see a Kali come out, uh -oh. uh, Rux picking it last. That will be an assassination-based team. They will be basing their game entirely around two AP assassins. Because yeah, I remember you asked me earlier if uh, at any point in this tournament uh, they ran an assassin comp. They kind of, but not really. And Nocturne be actually being considered for the jungle here, so it will be a support Zyra. Um, what, now, why did we actually not see them run this kind of assassin play earlier on in the bracket? Well, they could have get Diana. I, I see that, that's okay, the best thing. Okay, the end. Well, <laughs> you, you need two. You want two good assassins. Like one good diver is nice when they get far ahead. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like the term that a lot of people use is dive buddies, which is you want two people going in at once. They're the dive buddies, and they can take out someone really well. Diana works very well with the Kali. It's a good initiate. It's a lot of good AP damage, and it doesn't really matter who gets the kill. They both scale really well, and both have really good base damage at the same time. And so. yeah, and also this synergizes really well with the Zyra support. They're going to be going in for those dive ins. Diana and Nocturne, you don't even need, uh, not even need, considering, even if it isn't a Kali for the last pick, that's like a lot of great interference that Zyra ult will provide once everyone commits to the fight. And this Karth is picked incredibly solid against a composition like this, but that's a Mundo now, so let's see if it actually ends up being Karth. Is someone like Karth who can, there you go, coming out, it makes sense because the Assassins, they can burst him down very quickly, but they're not tanky for the most part. Right. Diana does tank up quite a bit, uh, if they go for someone like a Kali, she will get a little beefy, but not quite the same as other other characters. So also going to be spell vamp, and the fact that there isn't really a good bruiser. Nocturne isn't the tankiest character. He can build tank, but he doesn't, right. he doesn't really take much damage. You can avoid a spell, but that's about it. And also, uh, once Nocturne dives on in, and Karthus, he's going to be on the back line. He's going to be taking AOE damage the entire time he goes in for those fights. And you know, Diana for the same th same reason. So I will say that if TPA manages to bring this game late, that Karthus maybe too big to take, you know, too big to fail. It's going to be a situation you don't want to be in where there's someone you want to kill the assassin comp, but just killing him, you might die in the process. Yeah. Uh, if they do go for Akali, they're talking about that Akali right now. I can promise you that. They're thinking about it. 
it's not a common pick. It's not a safe pick. Is, is the no, big issue no, I it's think. not. Aurelia is, and Aurelia is also kind of an assassin. Not quite as damaging as someone like Akali in terms of burst, but she's a lot tankier, a lot more reliable. I can see this working out just so they have someone to go and take some of that Karthus layaways, take that damage, and still keep doing DPS. And uh, Aurelia is locked in. And even then, there's also. Aurelia serves the, the purpose of the frontline tank, if need be. There's a lot of sustain on Aurelia, can stay in the fights so much more longer, and you have that surge, you can dive on in straight with the best of them. So this is it. We got a nice little assassin-style comp coming in from Curse. TPA playing a little bit standard here, but you know that Mundo out in front, Karthus on the back, and also that we've been seeing this a lot this weekend too. Caitlyn and Nunu, very huge push-oriented lane, and you know a lot, you know a big part of the uh, the Asian meta is to go for those quick turrets and try and snowball from there. And like the more and more I talk to players, the more I look into it. It used to be that Caitlyn isn't really that good mid to late game because her abilities, they're not reliable. Pilled over Peacemaker, kind of tricky to land. Right. You might need some setup from other people. You might not hit the right targets. And it, of course, when you cast it, you're delayed for about a second. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, she has such a good laning phase. If you can apply the pressure quickly, which, well, people do. We've seen definitely some major leads. She always comes out ahead in CS. Usually you can make up for that weaker mid game, that weaker late game. Well, not even late game, just weaker mid game by having a lot more farm on her. Late game, she's effective just because she has 650 range. That's just a big number for range. <laughs> I'm also uh, I'm also liking Rux because as we start to to uh, progress in, uh, further on into the bracket, we're seeing Rux go outside of his comfort zone and play some other supports which we haven't quite seen him a whole, you know, play a whole lot of, and being very successful at it. It's been only, it's been nearly Nunu and Lulu this entire weekend, but. He's doing well. He's actually doing very well with these other sports. We saw him actually play a little bit of Sona earlier, too. Did great then. I'm not really surprised about it. He's He's been a solid player. Just no one noticed him in the past. And now that he's there, now that he's playing well, right? you know, hey, he's good, it turns out. Might as well. He's, uh, he's and you know what? I, I'm sure, Curse, they are more than happy uh, with his performance uh, you know, thus far. And even, even if they did end up losing to EU, I'm sure that they'd be, they're, they're already more than thrilled. But they beat EU in the end. They beat yes, Patoy. Yes, it, It's weird to say this. From what I've like talked to, Super A's may have not been the best match with the team. But Toy, like, was perfect for Curse EU. And not more importantly, he has the knowledge of Curse NA. Curse EU the, uh, and Curse uh, North America are the same organization, but they don't live in the same continent. They don't play that often against each other. And right. well, Patoy, he knows Curse NA. Dignitas yes, and Curse play a lot. So <laughs> it was a bit of inside information. But hey. Curse EU did not win. Curse Knight looked incredibly powerful. What are they going to go, go ahead and do to survive against TPA? Well, one thing we see from both of the supports coming on in, a pink and a green ward on both, and a health and a mana potion. The pink ward uh, actually going, going and saying, we want to be aggressive, we want to clear your coverage out either in the bot or in the river, and the mana potion saying we're looking for a lot of aggression. We're going to be using a lot of skills, so you might want to back off. Looking on over and down, you do see a little bit of vision. You do see the one ward coming on in. And uh, that is, uh, right now, TPA actually knows that their Wraith camp is awarded. Little ball's off on the side. Karth is getting a little bit of vision there. Toys throwing down some way wastes, looking for free damage, but just can't get it quite yet. But at the very least, keeping Curse zoned off for the time being. And really, this is all about the knowledge, all about where people are early on in the game. I mean, which team has a better level one fight? They're about equal. Uh, yeah. Karthus does a lot more damage, but what really matters is more who um, who can go ahead and get the catch. Both teams very being very defensive. TPA, they don't want to lose this game. They don't want to go ahead and fall to the losers so quickly. And we have a pause coming out, so yeah. just going to go ahead and wait. wait uh, I believe there are he headset issues going to be the issue. I think so, yeah. And it's always kind of the same thing where I think players are actually putting the headsets into the wrong slot. It happens what I've heard the most, But yeah, you know, <laughs> it happens. It's an issue sometimes. It, yeah. So that's, they're, they're hyped up for the game, you know. Yeah. Who remembers what, which color, which slot it is? But it's, it's, you're gonna, these guys are actually playing near the main stage or in some cases actually backstage uh, over here at the Cosmo. And it, let's, let's face it, sometimes the music can be distracting. Sometimes the lights can, can screw you up a little bit. Is it and still? I mean, the, the crowd right now, they oh, just man. saw we versus CLGU, which if you didn't see that match, once again, go, yeah. go watch the VODs when you get the chance. Yeah, we, I, we were like in the back of the room. We saw like a team fight essentially reset reset the match like yet again at like the 55 minute mark. I'm like, 
it's, this is going to take like at least another 10 more minutes. We can go into the casting room and watch the rest because we need to get over there like soon. Like we had to. Luckily, <laughs> at the same time, I believe the players were all watching the uh, match. So it's just like, yeah. you know, we're going to have a few minutes to kill anyways. <laughs> right. And and you said we had to get out of there quick too because you knew uh, the moment that match was over, like everyone's flooding out. It's like if, if you've ever tried to leave like a, a football game, like as soon as it ends, you know how bad traffic can be. I mean, the, the entire uh, Chelsea Auditorium there was yeah. completely packed. There was st it was standing room only at that point. There were security yeah. guards directing people to stand around, and it was it was a fantastic, fantastic game. It was so hype. It was so good. It was so choice. Uh, Boy Boy DC, but he should be back in just a second, resolving some of those sound issues. But um, is I'm, I'm looking though. I mentioned the supports. I mentioned the mana potion, and for support like Zyra. You're going to be throwing off those vines quite often. It's It makes a lot of sense to get that mana potion. To see Mistake get one, are we going to be seeing... I think we're going to be seeing a few more snowballs than we normally would from a new That's lane. a possibility if they want to uh, go aggressive. If it is a 2v1 lane, uh, Nunu does tend to uh, use a lot of mana. At the same time, if they want to push hard in a 2v1 lane, you can always use that visionary so passive. Amazing. But the big issue, I'd say, is the fact that if you want to keep up Blood Boil permanently, you can avoid doing that sometimes. But right. uh, I'm assuming BB and Mistake are going to want to play very, very aggressive in that bot lane. So uh, whoever... If they want to play more aggressively, they need Blood Boil up almost non-stop, and that is a pretty big drain on New News Banner. And even though, like, a Fairy Charm, in many instances, and the, the occasional passive cast uh, on Blood Boil is sometimes more than enough to actually keep you there for forever, really. Well, what Fairy Charm? Well, exactly. <laughs> uh, a Fairy Charm. In this case, a Fairy Charm is going to be two, uh, two less wards and no mm -hmm. potion. Right. Like the way it worked yeah. out, he bought three potions, and then the rest is wards, just because they want the vision. And they want the pink ward, I think, is going to be the interesting part. Whoever gets the better ward down, if they can clear the other guy's pink ward and still get good vision out of it, mm. it's going to be incredibly powerful. Like, uh, the ward that the, uh, TPA has at the Wraith camp, they're not going to pink that one, even though they see that Curse has right. one, because they already have vision there. It's not useful to them. They know it's there. It's a ward you can really work around. It's very good info for Curse, but it's also so common, teams have gotten used to it. If they want to go set up a gank for that ball, and if they want to do something, you know, a bit trickier, then that pink ward can be incredibly powerful. And if one team catches the other's pink ward, that's that's going to be huge. Yep. And also, when you have an aggressive support down in the bot lane, uh, sometimes brush control can mean everything. Like if you're a Blitzcrank, or in this case, a Zyra, being in the brush, bringing inside an unwarded a brush really screws with your head a little bit. You get paranoid. You have to start. Uh, you, you you play a little bit more cautious than you normally would. If you're playing up against someone like Blitzcrank, you might actually hide behind minions more often than you would because you're you have really no idea where the aggression specifically is going to be coming from. Now, what I really want to know what's going on is what's going on with this game. Pause still yeah. going on. Void Boy left the game twice, I believe, without reconnecting, which is impressive. Impressive in its I didn't own regard. Yeah, I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> that's uh, that's new to say the least. But hey, you know what? Got to fix their issues. Got to go ahead. Just try in. There, there we go. go. Get back in the game. Hopefully the pod should end soon. Is this the run? I hope I it mean, is. They got to get approval from the refs. There's a lot of process going on. Yeah. And yeah, shout outs to uh, also shout outs to all of our volunteers and everyone we, we brought out to help make this event possible. Uh, it's, it's, it's so weird because I'm meeting so many people that we uh, normally see in chat for the first time. Uh, the light blind, one of our mods, he's here. He's doing articles, and he's just, he's just the coolest dude. dude. Light blind mods like everything on Twitch. I think he, he might have global moderator like, if, there. If there's if there's a League of Legends stream, he mods it. And I, I've seen him like just modding just random stuff. He's, he always has the mod <laughs> tape. Like, how did you even get here? But whatever, just. I was like, uh, I don't know. I just out. showed up here and I had it. Like that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm trolling a speedrunner's stream. I see light blind up here with the moderator. It's like God, oh, I guess I'll stop hassling these guys playing this game quickly. God. <laughs> Slow down. But I mean, there's so many there's so many cool people at this event. If you ever get a chance to come out to an IPL, I mean, if you love esports, yeah. the hype. If I don't know if you've heard it on the mainstream, the hype is there. Yeah. And if uh, if you're okay with esports, you can you know watch them and then just go party in Vegas. Yep. And also, you know, any fans of esports, we hope that you're actually also tuning into uh, some of our other streams. Also, we got great stuff across multiple games, multiple genres. And uh, do please check into those. And remember, we also have the iOS app too. If you want to get your votes on you might be able to win some awesome stuff, free stuff, potential computer maybe. And remember, if you want to increase your odds winning that Origin PC, the more games you actually vote into, the better your chances. Just going to go ahead and keep on waiting now. There we go. We there, yep. Three We're more back seconds. In. This is the last of the waiting. 
Yeah. And welcome back to the game. Welcome back, everybody. Sound issues have been fixed for Boy Boy. We're now back into it. Curse NA going north up into their own jungle. Camping it out, but there is also a ward out in front of their Wraith camp from TPA. So they're not going to be going too far without being noticed. They could go aggressive, but, you know, it's about being defensive. It's about staying alive, really. No one wants to just Minions die. Spawn. Right. And that's Dying it's is something bad. we see every now and then. I believe in group stages... Uh, CLG versus uh, CLG did not end well for Prime. No, it did not. But um, it's that scary level one. It's that so much can happen, and most teams just don't want to take the risk. Uh, St. Vicious could be starting race. Actually, Boy Boy helping him out quite a bit. Taking some of the small race, which isn't a big deal, but very odd to see that normally. Normally, you just get away. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rux and Copper, are you going to take the Wolves? No, they're not. They're just going to pass on those for now. They just want to get to bot lane as quickly as they can. They don't want to lose any of that precious, precious farm. But uh, they made a mistake. They're actually making the long walk themselves. Also, Lil Ball's finishing up on the red. Is he going to uh, camp out down bot with them? No, he's going the long way because he remembered that the Wraith camp was warded. So he's going the long way around. Should be picking up the blue and then look for a gank somewhere. Now, that may have seemed very just kind of like, why did he do that? Well, even though Wraiths were gone, they know how long it takes to walk place. They know how much time he would spend just getting from point A to point B. So all of a sudden, that they can already be prepared. Oh yeah, Mundo can gank here in 15 seconds, here in 30. BB taking a lot of damage from Comp and his Mystic Shot, so good early aggression coming out. It's about two-thirds HP right there. Yeah. And uh, Rux has successfully gotten some rush control of his own. Thrown down to Vines, wants to keep Bebe away. While uh, clearing, some, clearing some time for Cop to uh, just to c catch up with the farm. They are actually equal so far, but it's still really early on in the game. Any real creep leads are not, uh, nothing too big, nothing worth, uh, nothing that critical this early on. I, I do like BB uh, drinking a health potion, Cop getting hit by a trap, and uh, that yeah. actually equaled out the HP. Just more <laughs> or less. Now, BB at full HP, Cop is a little chunk, but it's okay. Okay. Decent harassment coming out from Rux. Nice. Bebe taking a quick mystic shot to the face. But uh, auto attacks will also get there because remember, Caitlyn is one of the longest uh, attackers in the game. You can keep auto attacking through Zyra's roots. Some uh, roots you can't, like it was ultimate, but I believe that's more or less the exception. Yeah. Rather than the norm to the rule. Uh, in the Zyra lane, it's all about you know maintaining good mana on Zyra. Well, that mana potion is there. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't really become an issue until she gets a point in her Q. That's going to be a lot of mana used for harass. But what good grasping vines? You get the seeds down. You deal a lot of sustained damage as a support. In fact, when a cop doing his own auto attack damage, that's going to be huge. And you also look at the quick reaction there on Rux. Also, seed followed immediately by the vines to get that plan up. Boy, boy, taking way too much damage from Stanley there. They're actually somewhat even down to uh, each about uh, to a third health. Stanley throwing off the bullet just to keep it uh, keep it a little bit delayed from Boy Boy getting back to his own tower. That is that that could be a potential brawl fest up here in top lane, especially with a Saint Vicious actually making his way up. But once again, we encounter yet another pause. Let's go ahead and talk about these lanes for a Let's bit. Let's talk though. about these lanes. All right, so Diana versus Karthus. That's the lane where Toys just wants to farm, farm, farm. Yep. If uh, Jackie gets out of position too much, they can put down the wall, put down the exhaust, punish him. Uh, Rux now disconnecting, so maybe it might be his headset issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, Toys at this er Jackie in the, at the same time. He wants to go aggressive. He wants to look for his opening, try and get some decent damage done to uh, Toys. And it's very, very easy for his er for Diana when she sees the opportunity to go aggressive to really punish someone like Carthus, someone without mobility options. Um, well, I also want to talk a little bit about the junglers too, while we're at because we see Saint Vicious. He's uh, he's he, well, we know where he's going to be in about like three seconds. But uh, Lil Balls, Mundo is a, is a champ that we used to see a lot of. Still someone we occasionally see. But it seems like the, the Mundo play, actually both both Mundo and Nocturne uh, play in general has actually gone down. And why is that? Well, Nocturne has a big problem that you kind of need to get some kills. Uh, the farm isn't enough to make him either a big DPS threat or a big tanky threat. Mm. It's one of the two. And... Well, if you don't have the farm, if you can't survive, then you're not going to get the tether off, you're not going to get multiple tethers off, you're not going to be that useful. If you can't deal damage, it's kind of the same thing. It's like you don't get the burst down, you don't kill someone very quickly, remove them from the fight. And you just don't have enough gold to, to really do anything. That That's the big problem. If you do get kills, if you do snowball, he is insanely powerful. But that early start, you need something to happen. You need something to happen in your favor. Someone like Mundo. Mundo's... Well, he's got some good uh, comps he's good against, some comps he's weak against. For example, a comp with Karthus, even though he gets a lot of uh, tenacity from his W, it doesn't let him, he can still get kited very easily. There are a lot of ways to keep him out, despite the fact that he's very mobile. Pause ending. Let's go ahead and look top lane for that gank. Will it happen? No, because it is warded by the early uh, TPA wards. 
Unfortunate, that top tri ward is about to expire too. There's a few more things. We may actually see Sing wander on back to the top lane. Just for a little bit more aggression. Meanwhile, Cop eating some auto attacks in face. Baby is still very aggressive. And that extra movement speed coming in from the Blood Boil allows him to do such crazy tactics. I mean, he's at 319 movement speed, which is incredibly high for this point in the game. Looking over at Cop, he's, he's got a base of, I believe, 300 or 305. 305, so he's a 40 speed faster, Caitlyn. Yeah, it's pretty huge. And uh, Rogs also. Zyra, again, the support's not always getting boots first. At least Nunu has the blood will to supplement his movement speed, but right now Zyra's got nothing. And, that was uh, incredibly slow. I think she actually has pretty okay move speed for an AP. Yeah, oh, no, 305. That's never average. Mind. That's not good. That's yeah. <laughs> not enough to get away from that 392, Caitlyn. So. Or, yeah, or or any uh, quick cues, any skill shots coming out. It's, no. it's kind of hard. It's rough to juke those. It's rough to be a support in this lane. And it's really a punishing lane just because now they're a little bit pushed up, just a little bit. And because of that... Bebe, if he finds that opening, finds that option, you can go at, you can kill Rux, the straight out. But Cobb could very easily be taken down. There's a lot of chase potential coming out from this lane, just because of the high mobility, not so much the high uh, CC. Okay, that makes it scary. He's up here in top lane. Will can potentially go around and make an attempt here on Void Boy in top lane, but decides it's uh, not the most uh, frugal thing to do right now. But once he gets vision, St. Vicious is here in the mid. Blue Balls maybe attempting to set up an ambush here. Save is going around for his rates. Walks right into the Cleaver. Spell Shield goes up. Fear Tether broken. Nearly on contact. And uh, Lil Balls forces out two abilities, two rather expensive abilities, uh, actually from Nocturne. But he is still pretty high in mana. He backed recently. He's still relatively healthy. I believe his blue buff might have just run out there. He did not have a, a very quick... Uh Wolves to a golem that we normally see. So still had a bit of mana left, but uh, this is a, it's a nice press. Showing his presence, making him a, a bit more fearful, and it does slow down his jungle a tiny, tiny bit. Not that much because it was mostly the tether being used, no shadow trail used to uh, get that down. Rux taking the poke. This is what makes this lane bot so scary because Beb is never going to let the aggression. He's always going to be in your face, always going to be auto attacking, and they don't have necessar necessarily a reliable hard initiate. It's going to be the root that really sets up all the fights, but yep. that root, it may not land. Yeah, and uh, Rox helping uh, ensure the Rue lands. He did buy the boots, got those Nikes on, and also a whole bunch more wards and potions just to stay in. And look at Mistake, though. He's got nothing because he used it all, but they're still in a very healthy spot. But look, Nijacky, he is level 6, does have the ultimate available, so that's a lot of burst in that kit. There was the warning coming on in. Flash from Baby followed up by the net. Mistake with the slow pull back onto the Nunu. But no kill for Jackie down here roaming bot. That very quick flash caliber net, uh, saving Beb and actually saving Mistake at the same time. Uh, Jackie was looking for the flash. He was expecting to have it when he got so close that maybe this is my time to catch it. And had he been able to land that crescent strike onto Nunu, he could have gone forward, tried to be extra aggressive, but did not have it up because, well, Beb waited as long as he could trying to bait it out. Now twisting a little bit of damage from St. Vicious. They could go for this fight. It's going to be a good, good convergence. St. Vicious uses the spell shield already on a layways, but as he's giving chase, eating more Skittles along the way, he's like, okay, that's it, I've had my fill, I'm going to get out of here. But at the very least, uh, forced toys out of the mid lane. Nijeki also taking a little bit of quick hit from Stanley, but should be just fine. Trying to go ahead and bait St. Vicious back into the fight. Karthus does have his ultimate, he is level 7. Still 0 for 0 in a dead even game in terms of gold. And as overall, there's a bit more advantage of Bebe bot lane, he has a bit more CS, but no one's really that far ahead. The CS advantage is not too major. Cop, yeah. he is still doing fine. I would like to see uh, Lil Balls actually uh, make his way down over to bot. Uh, but hopefully within the next few minutes and hopefully within Oracles because there's a lot of push uh, coming from Rux and Cop because I think they realize that unless they push, unless they have the, the lane in their favor, unless they can't, unless they uh, keep that brush control, that they might be in a very bad spot, but that leaves them wide open for ganks. Leaves them wide open, and of course that chase petition from Caitlyn. Really, th there is no easy place to be against a Caitlyn lane. That's what makes it so powerful, unless she's at her own turret uh, CSing, and it has to right. be in the turret. If not, she can try and freeze and just chase you away. Uh, something nice for Stanley is he can gank now. He is level 7, he does have the ultimate. If he feels the need to go pressure a different lane, that boy boy is just going to spend some time not getting the turret top lane, he can go somewhere else. And that's, exactly, yeah. that's something that Stanley's been known for, just having the best roaming possibly in the world when it comes to the top lane. Yeah, that, that, that stealth, stealth period. Uh, on such a tank, such a, a, a champ that he's capable of being tanky if itemized correctly. That is just cool because he's you know, most self uh, champs in the game. They're not; they're they're, they're relatively squishy. But uh, Rengar is definitely one of the exceptions to the rule.
Yeah, Rengar. Well, it's weird because he's not necessarily the most DPS-based assassin, but he just sits on your carry, and he doesn't right. die. And your carry doesn't get away, but he really can't because you get slow from the bullet. It takes a lot of damage. Baby taking a lot, actually. Baby taking too much following that route, and there is a lot of auto attacks coming from Rux, whatever he can get. Along with the Q, the auto attacks, and the ultimate. Not enough to think about here comes the card. This ult will not be enough. The heal. summoner heal. Used by Cop to help save his support. Wonderfully done. But here's Boy Van St. Vicious was due to small goals, but now focusing down little balls. Nine Jackie with the Q ultimate on it. Here's the second part of the dash. Oh, they Holds need so it back. Much. But oh, can he get it to kill? Yes, St. Vicious helping on out. The Ignite still taking on him. No, that is a one for one so far here in the top lane. Meanwhile, it bought you cut Ezreal. Looking for a little bit more damage. Bebe getting very low. Uh, Bebe getting copped very low, but cannot connect with the kill. He's incredibly close, but once again, he used the ultimate earlier. Uh, this time, be copies going for the kill against, but Rux could still take the damage anyways. But still, a great play coming out across the board. TP a little bit farther ahead. I think they have a little bit more CS right now. And uh, did they get an assist? Yeah, they, they all got assists, so yeah. no one had an advantage with the kills. That was just a little bit of farm, because Karthus did not roam from that mid lane. They're going to CS, it's 184. A relatively small lead in terms of output and gold, but still nice. And well, they, they had Mundo trying to go super aggressive. They use a lot to kill him, but they still pick up that first blood, still shut him down early. Right. And Mundo, if he doesn't get enough items, he's just going to be kind of tanky. He may not survive for long enough. He may, may not have that sustained cleaver damage. That's kind of the big problem. He has to be incredibly tanky. He has to be able to go in there and just not die ever. And uh, speaking of tanky, he did buy two Doran shields. That's a lot of extra health. That's a lot of extra regen. And well, St. Vicious actually finding out Caitlyn here in the Bob Rush, but actually breaks the tether. Realizing this is not the most opportune oh, situation. Oh, Pink Ward going to go ahead pick up that Green Ward. Uh, oracles, oh, that's Oracles. Yeah. That's oracles. oracles. <laughs> I saw the Pink Ward not being that useful. <laughs> but like, look at that cool Pink Ward. It's barely in range. No, no. And sometimes. Well, Mundo is a Pink Ward. True. True. Mundo is the walking Pink Ward. But, well, well, unfortunately, he, uh, we do not have the default skin, so he's a Red Ward. He's, and, uh, he's modified. That's actually a really big advantage of Mundo. He's very good at clearing out wards because if you do try and catch him, unless he's full at the enemy jungle, <laughs> right. he's incredibly mobile. He has a flash. He has escape options. It's kind of like Udra, same thing, where you just you combine early oracles because he's so tanky, so hard to yeah. kill. And he's also uh, sacrificed a little bit of the tank that he normally would have to have that utility for his team. And if you want someone who's really tanking up, we'll just look at Stanley right now. Three Ruby Crystals across the board, bought one made into a hard gold, one into the Kindle Gem. There's a lot of extra health to have at this point in game so early on. Little Balls throwing down some cleavers, keeping Curse and A's bot lane at bay. And so look, look at him, he's nearly to, how much is health? That's, uh, was it 1922? 1922, yeah. That's a lot of HP very early in the game. And uh, go ahead and look at the farm bot lane. Actually, Stanley being pressured quite a bit top lane. Uh, Rengar versus that really is not a great matchup for Rengar. Eventually, I really will just have too much sustained damage. Yep. Rengar is very dependent on his cooldowns. And I really, you just need to hit in style. Once it falls off, if you retreat, you're okay. While it's up, though, her high base attack speed really makes her deal a lot of damage. St. Vicious wandering here into the top lane. Has the Q capturing, catching up with Stanley, or at least trying to. Throws down the ultimate just to escape will actually get to tower safely, so that is a kill averted there, top lane. But uh, Saint is still deciding to stay, his ultimate is almost up. They may decide to actually push in, but look at TPA, they realize the jungler is not here. Well, Nunu gonna ulted. use the ult mistake, that's, that's the damage is damage at this point. They just need to get it. They just need to get it, and get it they will. Nice thousand gold for Taipei Assassins, the first significant gold lead of the game. That's actually a problem, uh, trying to gank someone like Rengar without an oracle is probably difficult. Sailing taking a bit of DPS, but uh, Boy Boy not a man won't be able to fight for too long once his cell falls off, which he just did there. So, I mean, he tried to gank up top. He was actually following the shadow trail that he put onto him yeah. to uh, try to track him down. Great play from Saint, but he just had enough time to walk back to the tower and he was safe. So, with that dragon gone, there's a nice little lead accruing for TPI. Yeah, 50 and we, gold, very small. It's, but it's, it's small, but at this point in the game, it is, it is no, we've now actually gotten to a, a noticeable lead. And also remember that we've seen a lot of games with Curse and A here this weekend. And what seems to be the story whenever Curse, any Curse team is involved are these small leads and how quickly they can snowball or how quickly those can be erased. With two kills, two kills, Curse and A just completely negates that dragon and brings it back into an even game. They have to get it though. Top turret did fall though in favor 
of TPA. So they have now a 2,000 gold lead. A little bit of map control. Once Curse loses, it Oof. could be hard. BB's going to be very mobile going across the map with that Blood Boil. And Karthus, I mean, he's just going to keep farming that mid lane, keep going pr uh, aggressive and trying to farm. Really, their goal is maybe not so much to get towers to try and end the game quickly, but let Toys just kind of sit mid lane, get a lot of farm, force Jackie to roam. And if Karthus is far enough ahead of someone like Diana, he can really punish that. And uh, speaking of Karthus too, in Toys, he is level, uh, he actually just dinged level 12. He's at level 2 in that ult for a little while. So that thing is going to hurt that much more. How's it do, how much does it do right now? 468 damage. Uh, look at the farm though. This is, I think, going to be the big story. It's pretty huge. 141 CS on Caitlyn to 100 in Ezreal. That's, that's a huge advantage. Some of that was some jungle pressure. But this is the new new Caitlyn line. We've seen it before. It is incredibly effective in lane. As what makes her powerful later. Not so much that she is powerful, but that Ezreal is so far behind. Yep. It's and, uh, 47 CS. <laughs> Now. That's quite and a bit. the turret. And the turret's going to go down. There's going to allow the, the, uh, the mini wave to take it. Nia Jackie caught beyond the wall of pain. Bringing Stanley in for a few free turret shots, but toys, the pressure is too much. That AoE deals too much damage to Nia Jackie. He has to fall back. Mistake, though, with the uh, pink ward, going to be taking out the coverage over uh, over at the Curse's own blue, but here's come oh, here's the fun game. Need. Saint Vicious diving straight on into Toys. The fear will go down, but the AOE shall remain for a few more seconds. Night Jackie caught between a uh, Rengar and a Mundo. It's a struggle for Saint Vicious to get away, but he shall not. The new Karthus ult doing huge damage to everyone. Mistake taking quite a bit of damage, but baby, can you clear the gap? Can you get a kill on the Rux to slow? From that plant was just enough, but Stanley also being poked out here. Boy Boy came down from top lane just in an effort to defend, but the mid-tier one is below half, and the pressure is such I don't think Curse can defend this one either. Turret should be going down soon. Bib, it was go. tanking, but you know what? They got it. And that, that fight started out with a, what looked like a very cut-out toys, but of course, the global presence from someone like St. Vicious is only noticeable if they can really... Well, damage and kill someone like Karthus. Karthus, yep. he farmed fast. He has a challenge to survive against Diana, so has a lot more HP than you would normally think he would. And, well, he tanked it out and was able to just fight on back. This, right now, Stanley, this Rengar is truly, truly, truly outrageous. Uh, has a total bought four Ruby Crystals. Three of them bought built into other yeah, I, items. I love that phase. You can still build it to a warm You, you can know. still build it to Actually, a warm Spirit Spirit, Spirit, probably gonna Spirit, Yeah, you can do that too. It's, well, that's what the Kindle Gem is That's for, what the Kindle Gem, yeah. So he's got 2,500 health. Could be Warmonks. Could be. That might be my guess. Yeah, so really so, though, <laughs> it's it's way too much health to have on someone. There's spirit massage. There's fish. Yeah, there we go. Maybe he just likes having a treat, but really, this is all based he's got off a, yeah, his he's shout. Got a, yeah, so spirit visage and a, the other uh, room crystal into another Kindle gem. That is, I, I could barely, it was like 24, yeah, 2400. How much does Little Balls have? He's got to be jealous about, Rengar is more health than Mundo. How ridiculous is that? Not very, but St. Vicious, look at his build. He's got Berserker Greaves. He's going aggressive. He's going for the offensive build. Still has Ooh, a gold, heart of gold. Can average be kind blade. of hybrid, really. Yeah. Might be an eventual ghost play. We don't see it that often, but when you do get to use it, it's actually a very nice damage boost. Yeah, and Fertilizer is also not too uncommon on Nocturne. Nah, it's, it's a pretty good item for him. It it fills his needs. He does need more CDR. That's a lot more CC. That is the Shadow Trail Up, so you can keep chasing. It does a lot for him. It's just not common to see on him. Usually you see either straight tank. I'd say, I'd say straight tank is the common build. Yeah. But uh, St. Vicious, he has Preserve Greaves. He's going to be focusing really on killing Bebe. That's going to be the big issue for uh, Curse and A right now. They need to take out Bebe. He does a lot of damage does it very quickly. And even though Toys is going to be a huge pain, they want someone like Moiba to take him out. Like, they want Jackie, Cop, and maybe Moiba to take him out quickly and then just disengage from that very, very dangerous defile. Yeah. I got to imagine, though, Curse and A, they, they, they're probably not feeling too hot right now. All those quick objectives taken have actually put them into a 4K deficit. And I got to imagine that St. Fish has probably brought, uh, bought that Avers Blade just because he needs a little bit more income. That is definitely, you barely see that item on anyone whose name isn't Gangplank, let's face it. Yeah, even, well, even on Gangplank. Well, not even on really Gangplank, that's not, it's not even really. So, yeah, your parlay is crit, but you're still Gangplank, so. Exactly, um, you're still, you're still yeah, Gangplank. <laughs> he's got a lot of problems right now. Just all of course, NA, they're behind 4,000 gold. They can try and get this through objective. Love its turrets. Oh, St. Vicious, where's he going? He's going straight to the bigger oh, one. Actually, the uses wall. the net to go over the wall. St. Vicious is now in a lot of trouble. You got the wall pain and the Caitlyn ult. Keep him behind with Little Balls that has the ultimate up. But here comes Karthus ult. It will not be enough to spell shield from Nocturne to prevent him from all the damage coming on in. But the, alas, the last hit will actually go to Bebe, so he's getting credit for that kill. And meanwhile, look at Stanley on his own pushing, split pushing top lane while all four remaining members of Curse and A are down here in the bot. This is actually what we saw to Calme coming up for as we ever seal G. You know, he just constantly pushed top lane as that Rengar. Ultimate comes out from Cop, but oh, the big tanky seed minions being uh, focused. 
Oh, oh they need this kill. Ooh, baby. Oh, a little bit too far out. Huge, huge, huge misstep from TPA. And you thought it was safe. It was not. Well, of course, mistake they're making a mistake. They need those kills. They need those pickoffs because, frankly, the, the gold lead now 4,000 with those kills. Top turret having very little HP. Well, but trying to chase down a Stanley. going to be a hard kill no matter what just because of how easy it is for him to escape yeah. when he presses R when he gets from that brush. He's, going for he's the still lead. going aggressive. Even. One more roar. He will, he's going to sustain quite well. Boy, boy, the ultimate is up. He's going to be looking for extra damage. And there's the ignite going down onto Aurelia. Dipping in and out. Now, Stanley finally uses the ultimate. It's just a matter of can he actually get away. Boy, boy's chasing in the right direction. But there's enough, there's enough anger built to get yet another roar and to keep him surviving to meet up with toys. But in the meantime, though, that was a dragon taken out by NA. A great job there. You know, they have a chance to get an objective. They saw Rengar being uh, attacked there. They knew that TPA was probably going to go ahead and back him up. But uh, right now, it's Caitlyn that's strong. It's Karthus that's strong. It's the AD and AP carry that's really scaling out of control for TPA. They're the ones that have the gold lead that makes it a 3,000 lead in their favor. They're the ones that, uh, well, Curse, they have to watch out for them. Look at the CS lead on Karthus. 162 or 202 <laughs> to 165. That's a good that's, 40 CS. That's a lot. And it's a bigger difference between Caitlyn and Ezreal. Oh my god. That's about 50 right there, 52 at the moment. So they just, they are so far behind in CS that it's really affecting them. Then you factor in the turrets, just the global gold. Yeah. It's on the right people, the, the gold advantage, and that's going to be very scary for Curse. That late game is, it's a little bit stronger for TPA just because they have Karthus. Yeah, and looking forward into game two and possibly even game number three, uh, I can't help but imagine Curse and A, they may not want to do that passive thing anymore. They've done. We've seen them do passive play this morning, and uh, now they're realizing the root. You know the root. Uh, yeah, they're playing the realization that uh, TPA can out passive them. A lot of teams can out. Uh, <laughs> like a lot of teams have that passive potential, and when one team can out passive the other, usually it's just kind of a hard stop. Yeah. It's like you're gonna farm. Well, I'm gonna out farm you, and I'm just gonna win. But luckily, Curse Mate, they've been aggressive. Their plans just haven't been working out necessarily. Right. Lots of good ideas, but in the end. It's Karthus farming mid as Jackie tries to make plays around the map. It's Bebe going over the wall, <laughs> picking up St. Vicious. By the way, that earlier death on St. Vicious, uh, he ran into a Ural snap trap, and that's what killed him. That's what let Caitlyn get one more auto attack off. Oh. That's what let Karthus' ultimate uh, help finish him off and take him just to the brink. It was a, a snap trap. I didn't even realize that. Oh, well, then again, you know, some, sometimes those cupcakes and those brushes can be very hard to see. and. That is a great placement for one too. Just like right on, right where you feel someone's gonna be entering one of those brushes is a great place to put things like the Caitlyn trap. Well, the, the funny thing is, he actually put it somewhere where we could see it. Like he had a second to walk oh, there. Oh, he did. But uh, uh, it, he, there was nowhere for him to run. Like he yeah. had to go straight. Saint Vicious though, taking a lot of damage, being chased down by Stanley. Stanley not super DPS, uh, <laughs> but it, still <laughs> tanky and still really hurts. Saint and Vicious still a three-level so advantage now. on him too. Yeah, it's just the auto attacks. Web went now up there. Stanley does have his ultimate. Should be able to escape this. Just no oracles, no vision, no way to keep him down. All right, Jackie looking to join the fight also. At the very oh, least, keep it in the lane. You get the pullback, but you don't see him falling back. The Crescent Strike would have revealed it. That could have been the vision they needed, but they missed it. They didn't get it, and that's that's it. That's He's gone. Now it's a three-man push bottom versus a two-man defense. As TPA Toys pushing down that mid lane, just throwing some uh, card at this auto attacks. Not the most yeah. impressive, but still applying pressure. Right. That's it's something. Yeah, it's something. This is that HP turret falling slow, or quicker and quicker in favor of TPA, and a uh, boy boy tries to go aggressive, but Stanley's got some other ideas going on. Stanley may actually be able to nab that, use the ignite, but we'll also see where St. Vicious is going there in the mid. Wants to get some damage onto toys, but he does get to his turret quickly enough. Stanley, full of rage, just one more roar. Heal up just a little bit more, and this is a Void Boy who's still at a level disadvantage to Stanley. Little Balls with the ultimate just now ending through a very angry Cleaver over at Nijacky. He's like, hey, get out of my lane. Uh, Stanley knew that if he got him low enough, Void Boy would be dying to Karthus' ultimate. Now that Karthus had been engaged on, had already escaped, he knew that was a good situation. TPA, it looked like they were going for a Baron. Uh, Stanley just going to use that to yeah. build some ferocity up. And it looks like, my, my guess would be a Crescent Strike or the uh, Shadow Trail from Nocturne going ahead, hitting Baron, making him go, ah, don't hit me, and then yeah. attacking the players. Yeah, one of the best things you can do uh, against someone who's clearing out Baron or putting a ward inside the Baron pit, if you have an ability... Attack Baron, can, yeah. Yeah, just, just attack Baron. It's like, yeah. oh, who did that? Who did that? Hit was that it nerd. you, small rodent? You're the closest to me. He's like, no, it wasn't me. I sure, no, no, I don't, I think he you're doesn't a liar. Care. He, just, he just wakes up, he's like, who hit me? Who's going to get beat up? Who, yeah. Who's the nerd now? <laughs> who's the nerd? <laughs> mistake off, off to the side. Same vicious regretting going on the toys. There's Mistake filling up the entire mid lane with his ultimate and helping take down that Nocturne. Karthus will go down, but he does have his ultimate still up. 
will be getting anything oh, on the, the Arcane Rocks. Ult Very or the low. Stanley's is stealth. One leap clears the gap over to a minion just to get the bull strike for the kill onto the support Zyra. And True Shot Project came out of Ezreal during that fight, tried to nab that, 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 able to go ahead and retreat, stay alive. And this is, well, it's a 4,500 gold lead in favor of TPA. They're losing bot turret, they can now pressure mid turret. Top turret has very little HP at the same time. They're losing control on toys. He got dove on, he forced his fight when they did try to attack him underneath his own turret. And that's, that was still some good reaction from Chris. They almost killed Bebe. Almost. But it, was, it wasn't close enough, and the fact that it wasn't meant to survive. That's less gold going to the team. That's another extra assist, I believe, going in favor of Bebe. And that's just, that's not a good situation to be in. Caitlyn yeah. is 113, 245 CS, still that 55 CS advantage. Same with Karthus, more or less. And the gold lead is growing. Farm is growing because of objectives being taken. It's kind of growing in favor of TPA right now. Yeah, there's actually an equal advantage uh, for both of TPA's mid and ADs uh, over their opponents. This is about uh, 1,000 to 1,500. Uh, jungles are actually quite even, but look look at the difference between Stanley and Boy Boy. That is absolutely massive. That is 2,500 gold difference. Nearly all of it invested into health. And Stanley buying even more of it. He's got a Sunfire cave He just now. wants to tank there. He just wants 30, to sit there. Thir nearly 3,500 health. What is wrong with this Rengar? That is, he's bigger than the Mundo. Well, Rengar's a little bit broken. He's so a little bit. <laughs> I mean, the way Stanley's playing him, he can just go ahead and stay wow. aggressive. Nice play right there. <laughs> you can use a hop to get over the wall. What was really impressive was that Baron, he will attack somebody with a Sunfire cape, but Stanley barely, uh, well, he didn't get in range at first, so he avoided that most of that damage damage while taking out that ward. And there's also uh, pings going down like mad over into South Jungle on Curse's side. Stanley out in the mid. They know he's going to push pings low, low down over by the blue buff. They know of their awareness. Oh, that's a blue buff though taken by TPA. Well, Toys already has his own too, so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be going yeah. to Bebe. That's just more uh, Piltover over Peacemaker's mo poke. Scurs, they're going for the fight. Stanley can ultimate in there. Can they really fight this? St. Fish is going to try anyway. Toys out in front. There's a pullback from Diana. Garthus does go down, but there's still plenty of damage to be wreaked. Well, Little Balls with the ultimate still in the fight. Boy, we go straight for the back line, but regarding decision, Zyra ult only getting Stanley, but that's not going to stop him. Rock still ignited. Cop left over onto the side. Does use the flash to get over the wall, but Stanley in return. You will not stay. You will not live today. The five Ace. for one. They get Karthus. They had to take him out first, but in the end, well, they're losing their bot turret just to go. <laughs> Stanley's tanking is my god. Jeez. And that's that's an eight thousand gold advantage. Curse. They tried to fight it. They didn't know. They knew they were behind, but I don't think by how much. And that's just kind of the power of toys when he gets that farm. You can take him out quickly, but he has the damage. He has even just the ride free to survive for long enough to just do so much ridiculous damage. And Bebe, he was in the back line the entire time. Didn't really get focused. That'll get free auto attacks off. Stanley took the brunt of the damage after to or Toys had died. But that's okay. Yeah. He was tanky. He got to kill himself that fight, and he wants to take damage. He wants to be the guy getting hit because he is so beefy. So we saw uh, St. Vicious was really the one who who called, who called, made the call. Uh, he was the one fight. who won him first. He's Unfortunately, yeah. with Berserker Greaves, he does not have an Aegis. Like, he's going for both DPS and tankiness. But unfortunately, he's still squishy. He's still too squishy. He just doesn't have enough items. Right. He's not really a tanky DPS right now. He's just kind of... A half tanky, half DPS, not enough yeah. to do a lot in these fights. And it kind of showed there, they did pick up toys, but that's one kill versus the five that they got in response. Yeah. And you know, like, would you, what would you consider then, what is Curse's best case scenario uh, for an engage? Well, unfortunately, if they didn't have someone like Karthus, it'd be you will pick up the AD really quickly or pick off the AP. Right. So because of Karthus, he has to die first. You cannot let Karthus survive. It's weird because you think with the passive, we'll just keep him up last, take him out then. That way, he doesn't get the passive to take advantage of. But that means Karthus is alive. That means he's mobile, and you're taking a ton of damage because he does ridiculous, ridiculous amounts with very little AP. Yep, yeah, and also keep in mind where Tori's died. He died near, like right on the right on the outside uh, of the Dragon Pit. So he was still in range to get off the walls of and the ladies and everything else he needed to. There is the new new ult in the middle of the pit. Nocturne tried for the steal. St. Vicious bravely attempted, but unfortunately you will not be able to smite this one today. That is a type A assassins with the Baron buff. All five of them very healthy. The toy's a little bit low on mana, but that's okay. That's fine. The regen will help get that up pretty quickly. Cops slowed. Stanley still tanky as ever. And as a five full push. For TPA here in the middle, a little bit of mini support, but their damage, I think they got this one pretty easy. 
should be able to go ahead. Actually chasing down NY Jackie. Now, Jackie nice. taking a lot of damage. That bit just that hurts too nothing. much. That was nothing. Night Jackie just absolutely melted under the pressure. Boy Boy is looking to uh, fall the same way. Cop cannot see why there's a card. This old front load more damage on. Kurt, uh, Rux May is. Did he actually? He actually got he Rux. He got Rux. In that, the fountain. And that's that's all that Cardinal Ultimate did. That was almost <laughs> entirely Bebbit. That was the power of TPA with her gold lead. Bebbit has a blood boil, dealing ridiculous amounts of damage. Zeke's finished yep. on the mistake. They have the items to make him strong. Has a fan dancer. Oh, God. St. Fish, you don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. Uh, he died mid ultimate. And uh, I didn't even know in some point cases well, that I mean, was possible. St. Fish smarted himself there because there was very little for him to do. Boy, boy, yeah. already leaving the game. That was. That was, a, that was a pretty big stomp. That was a pretty big stomp. Yeah, 18 to 6, the final score. So I think uh, what Curse uh, Curse and A has learned off of this match, at the very least, is that uh, if they decide to play the passive game, TPA straight up will just do it better. I, I like how Boy Boy uh, gets the instant <laughs> loss or bad, instant leave. Look bad, at bad, bad. No on IP you. for that game for Boy Boy. Oh, he's gonna be. He's he's he's, he's not gonna be able to get those extra runes. It Re sucks. Report Boy Boy, please. Replace your report. But, <laughs> Here's the thing. Yeah. First, they won up against TPA. They had Karthus. They had Caitlyn Nunu. Mm. No pressure really went down bot lane. St. Vicious just couldn't get there. Right. Uh, mid lane, Karthus free farmed nonstop. So what happened? Karthus got enough gold. Caitlyn bullied out Cop just because you knew Caitlyn is such an aggressive lane. You just do not deal with it as most characters because 650 range, that's pretty high, especially when they're moving at 392 yeah. movement speed at level 1. And in most cases, you would consider Ezreal a safe farmer, especially someone as aggressive as Zyra, but it just didn't happen. It couldn't do it. Like, too many free auto attacks would uh, hit Cop. Yeah. And it's not that like he can do a lot to really stop it. Every time he goes for a CS, unless it's Mystic Shot, which, well, he'll fall, fall behind if he only uses Mystic Shots. Right. Then, that's a lot of mana invested. Like, every time he goes for an auto attack, you just shoot him once. Get him, take him out. <laughs> and just look at the end game stats. I mean, Karthus with uh, two two point six k. Same thing with with Kaylin on with Bebe. Absolutely huge. That's it, like Cop. What, what, yeah, Cop had eight point one k at the end there. Bebe had twelve point six. That's a four and a half thousand gold advantage between the AD carries between the guys who scale incredibly well with less yeah. gold than that. Actually, actually look at this. Uh, Stanley almost doubled up Voy Boy. And, well, what could Voiboy really do? Stanley just stayed yeah. top, but he got all the kills, all the global gold. I mean, Curse and A, their plan now, they have to come in with a bit more aggressive plan. Not just right. kind of, we'll go through the lens, we'll go through the motions, try and punish TPA. TPA, they were, on the, they were on the aggressive move for the most part, but their main goal was if we just kind of play in their faces, we can let Karthus free farm and Bebid, if he doesn't take the pressure, he'll just, mm -hmm. he can carry. So, I mean, great play coming out from TPA. They they are now one up. Curse and A, they got one more game to play. And if they lose that game, well, two more games. If they lose the first game, though, I mean, they're going home. This is it. Yeah, not too, not, not too far behind uh, their brother team, which they knocked out earlier this morning, too. I mean, they, they got to go ahead, just kind of sit on a big couch, put their arms around yeah. Curse EU, put their arms around Elements, and just watch all the games uh, <laughs> coming up this weekend, which are going to be yeah. fantastic. Yeah. But they don't want to do that. No, that would be bad. And also, keep in mind, too, the uh, the North American hopes in this tournament are dwindling. They're both in losers quickly. now. CLG Prime now in losers. Curse a what game from possibly being eliminated? Yeah, it's scary, man. It's a shame, but uh, you know this series is not over yet. TPA and Curse NA, game number two, gonna be coming up right after this. We will see you in a little bit.